Okay, we're going to do the, um, the muscular system, and the same way as we did with the bones, it's going to be an axial skeleton and an appendicular skeleton. We are going to start with the appendicular skeleton, and what we see here, this is the upper limb model, and uh, we can start from the back, right here, and you see this is the spine of the, uh, uh, of the scapula, here is the scapula, this triangle right here, scapula, and this is the spine of the scapula, which is breaking down the scapula or marking uh, a spine that's, uh, that's marking between the two fossa. If you remember, the supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa. So this muscle here, the deeper muscle on the supraspinous fossa is the supraspinatus, and this muscle right here, infraspinatus. It's different parts, one, two, three, but it's all together infraspinatus, infraspinatus muscle. Supraspinatus, not this one. This one, we cut it. This is a trapezius. It's actually covering the supraspinatus. So if you look here, this is a supraspinatus, which is superior to the spine. Superior to the spine, supraspinatus. Inferior to the spine, infraspinatus. How about this? Infraspinatus, infraspinatus, the whole thing. Under the infraspinatus, you see two muscles, one and two. This is called the teres major, and this is called the teres minor. Teres means, means the long round muscle. Teres major, teres minor. The long rounded muscle that's large, and the long rounded muscle that's short. So, uh, teres major, teres minor. Okay. So again, this is supraspinatus, and it's covered by trapezius. They cut the trapezius, so you can see. So don't confuse the supraspinatus with the trapezius. This muscle right here is a deltoid muscle, the whole muscle of the shoulder here. This is deltoid muscle. And if you go to the front, you will see this muscle, and this is pectoralis major. Actually, this is half of pectoralis major, not the whole thing. Here's the second part. It, sh it should go like this like the whole thing, but it's the muscle inferior to the clavicle. This is your clavicle right here, and underneath the clavicle, pectoralis major, and underneath, you're supposed to have pectoralis minor, but it's not showing here. But this and this together, those are the pectoralis major, or the muscles of the pectoral region, and um, you just cut it. Um, if you go, if you move again to the scapula, but the uh, subscapular fossa, or the anterior part of the scapula, this is the part that's actually facing the body, uh, which, which it gives the same number, but it's one muscle, the whole muscle that's co covering the subscapular fossa, this is called subscapularis. So again, the muscles that are related to the scapula. Uh, look at the back, you see the spine. Above the spine, superior to the spine, supraspinatus. Inferior to the spine, infraspinatus. And the subscapular fossa, this is called the subscapularis muscle, right here, the whole muscle. This is four muscle, and uh, those three muscles together, supraspinatus, infra, uh, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and subscapularis, the three muscles, plus teres um, uh, minor, together this is called the rotator, rotator cuff muscles. Okay, the next is going to be the arm. If you look at the arm, this is the front of the arm, this is a biceps muscle, and you see this is a short head, even though it looks like long, and this is a long head, even though it looks like short. But this is a long head, and it's covering, it's covered by the short, and it goes underneath and circle around. So this is actually the long, and the one that you see the whole muscle, it's called the short, and it's attached here to the coracoid process. So this is a biceps, long head and short, uh, long head and short head. How come this is a short head, it looks longer? It's because the entire muscle is seen. You can see the entire muscle. But the long head, you can't see the rest of it, but if you measure it, it's longer. So, short head, long head. Attached to the coracoid process of the scapula. And another muscle here that attach also come from the coracoid process of the scapula, of the scapula and this is called coracobrachialis. Coraco means a coracoid process, and brachialis means brachium or the, or the arm. If you look at the back, you will see this muscle here, of the back, this one, and this is called the triceps muscles. And you have three heads for the triceps muscle. Uh, you have uh, MLL, the medial, lateral, and long. Medial, lateral, long. These are the three heads. Here is the medial head, 
this is a lateral head, and in the middle is a long head. You have three heads of the triceps. In between the two, the, the biceps and triceps, you see the muscle in between laying on the brachium. So they call it brachialis muscle. It's number uh, 10 here. So again, the arm, you have the biceps in the front, triceps in the back, and in between. If you're looking laterally, you see the brachialis muscle. If you're looking medially, in between the two, you see coracobrachialis. These are the four muscles that we need to know for now. Biceps, triceps, in between and inside is coracobrachialis. In between and outside, right here, this is the uh, brachialis muscle. If you go to the muscles of the forearm, and this is considered the hardest, this muscle right here, if you notice, it starts here from the back and circle around, go lateral, and then go anterior. There's only one muscle that starts posterior, go laterally, and then end up anteriorly, and this is called the, uh, the, the, the brachioradialis muscle. Because start from uh, the brachium, straight here, start from the brachium, this, and the brachium is the humerus, start with the, the brachium, and end at the radius. And the radius, the radius bone is the bone that's lateral, towards your thumb, okay? And then this side of the forearm is called the flexor side, and this side is called the extensor side. Naming the muscles. You see, um, we always don't, consider, don't, don't um, count this as part of the, uh, of the naming that we're going to do right now. Here is how to name it. Look at this muscle right here. This is a flexor compartment, so we're going to call it flexor something. And if you follow the muscle, it's going to end at the carpus, so we call it flexor carpi. And it's toward the radius, flexor carpi radialis. If you look at this muscle right here, this is the flexor side, and it ends at the, uh, the, uh, the carpus, so they call it flexor carpi. And this is the ulnar side, so flexor carpi on theirs. In between, In between, you will see this muscle here that's going toward the middle of the palm. They cut it, but it's, it's, it should go to the palm. In the middle, palmaris longus. So what you have here, flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi radialis. And over here, flexor carpi ulnaris. It's flexor and at the carpus and um, toward the ulna. In between, you see the palmaris lungs. And the muscle that's covered underneath here, this one right here, is flexor digitorum. It's flexor, and it goes down and goes here. It's going to flex the digits, flexor digitorum. If you go to, to this muscle right here, this is called pronator teres. Why did you call it pronator teres? Because this muscle, when it contracts, is going to pronate, like move it like this. Move the hand to pronation, like this. The muscle that's going to do this action, pronation. Pronation. So this is pronator tears, the small muscle of the elbow. If you go to the back, you will see the following muscles. Number one, this is extensor at the extensor surface. I mean this one right here, extensor at the extensor surface, and it ends at the carpus and it's toward the ulna. So this is extensor carpi on nurse. This one right here. Extensor carpi on nurse. And if you go here, those are the extensor side, and they are going to end at the carpus. So those two are extensor carpi. Extensor carpi ulnaris, longus and brevis. We have two of them. The other side, we will have only one muscle for each. But this, flexor carpi um, uh, radialis longus and flexor carpi radialis brevis. In between here, you see this muscle that's very easy. If you follow, it's going all the way to the digits. So this is the extensor digitorum muscle, extensor digitorum muscle. And you also see two muscles here. <coughs> this muscle right here, if you follow, it's going to go to the uh, thumb. So we're going to call it something pollicis. This is uh, abductor pollicis, uh, and this is extensor pollicis. Why? Because this abductor pollicis, longest muscle, it's going to go... Uh, as you see here, here it is, if you follow, it's going to the lateral side of the, th of the thumb, so you call it um, uh, ad abductor uh, pollicis longus. And this muscle should go to the back, so that this is extensor, so you call this muscle right here, the small muscle here, extensor pollicis brevis. 
muscles of the thumb, around the thumb. If you see the muscle at the lateral compartment, it's going to abduct. So this is abductor uh, pollicis. If you see it here, this is going to adduct. So adductor, I'm sorry, this is flexor, sorry. Here is the adductor, here is the abductor, here is the flexor, and here is the extensor. What? Pollicis, brevis. So adductor is the inside, abductor is outside, flexor in the front and extensor in the back. These are all the muscles that move. There are some more muscles, but um, that will be it for this time. Um, if you look here, the same thing. The, the, uh, the small digit is called the digiti minimi. So you have flexor digiti minimi in the front of the, minim uh, the minimal digit. And there is one in the back of the minimal digit right here. This is extensor digiti minimi. And you see one here that's going to move the, the digit away, so this is abductor digiti minimi, and the adductor is inside. So this is for the um, upper limb.